All right, we're back to the Health Engineer Show. I'm Clint Fuquay, the Health Engineer, right here on the Alphabet Business Media Network. And you have heard, I'm sure you've heard it said, your body is a temple, right? It's been said a lot of times. And well, it is true, your body is a temple and you need to protect it and worry about, you know, what you put into it, right? And you're always worried about uh, the foods going in, water and everything else. The other thing that you need to be aware of is, well, Yes, it's a temple. It needs to be protected. It is a sacred space. It is your sacred space because it's the only place you've got to live. With that, you need to be aware of like your own internal security system. And can you protect it? Can you protect this, this temple and have it be aware of things around it that may want to do it harm? Because, well, one basic thing about health is if you're not alive, you're not healthy, right? <laughs> it's just a simple point of fact. Um, if you, if you see me, I love Cobra Kai. If you haven't watched it, please watch it. Great show. There's a lot of lessons to be learned there, but a lot of this comes down to, you know, protecting yourself, uh, self-defense. I grew up doing self-defense. I grew up in that. Uh, so here's the thing. You need to be aware of everything around you to protect yourself. And that's the deal. Knowing what's going on, having that internal system, hearing things, seeing things, feeling things, being aware of what's going on around you, being aware of the people around you because, well, you don't know what their intent is all the time. Sometimes you can read it, sometimes you misread it, okay? Uh, there's also, you know, having like some false safety that we people often carry around. Getting away from that, okay, and being secure in yourself and knowing about, you know, what's going on and can you get, a, can you get around it? Can you survive? Can you escape? Can you get out? And that's what we're going to be talking about on the show today with my buddy Jeff McKissick, who's been doing this for over 40 years. Uh, we know, I've known him for a long time. You're going to love this show. It's actually, not only can it save your life, it will eventually save your life at some point or help you save the life of somebody else or protect, defend them, whatever. It's going to be a very powerful show. I'm really, really pumped to have this coming to you uh, for everybody today. Uh, also, you know, you know the ring. You know, I do a lot of stuff with uh, military uh, first responders, stuff like that. Huge piece of this for me. So. Come in, join us. We're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to laugh, by the way, with this one. Come back and join me with Jeff McKissick. We're going to be talking about how to protect your temple. Stay healthy for the rest of your life. Clint Fuquay is the health engineer, dishing up health care reform through personal responsibility in the areas of nutrition, discipline, and fitness. Clint cuts through misunderstood health theory with over 35 years of practical results. Start taking control of your health today with The Health Engineer. Here's your host, Clint Fuquay. All right, we're back to The Health Engineer Show. I'm Clint Fuquay, The Health Engineer, right here on the Offbeat Business Media Network, also known as the OBBM. Check us out and check out my guest, who I've known for a long, long time. The galaxy far, far yes. away. We, we're actually we're <laughs> going to do our own, uh, well, our own little version of what's going on right now with, uh, well, you've seen the martial arts show that's out right now. You got Johnny, you got Daniel back together. Oh, Daniel's on. Yeah, we're coming back together. Yeah. <laughs> so, a little Cobra Kai action. There will be no fighting in this, hopefully. Um, uh, we'll see. Watch the outtakes. <laughs> but, uh, so I want to bring you on because, well, health and safety and well taking care of your, your own personal safety are a huge issue because if you can't take a, care of your own safety being healthy is kind of impossible especially if you're dead because you read a situation wrong or you're out and about you don't you're not aware of your surroundings what have you because you've been doing this for how long now do do we do want to say how long well <laughs> just the, on the physical aspect yeah to start with the physical aspect 40 some odd years yeah, because I met you 15 years ago. Yeah, when you were with uh, uh, KFM. Yep. K Casey Fighting Method. If you've seen Batman, the, the trilogy, the best trilogy, you've seen you've seen them in action. Uh, that's kind of where we met. Mm -hmm. um, you were doing DVD stuff then. I was slinging supplement products and all that stuff, and so we just kind of merged and had a friendship start from there. Um, and then, of course, thanks to you, I'm doing this now. Th this is all big. Seriously, everybody out there. This is because this guy. It's, it's your I, fault. I don't want to get emails blaming it's me your, for it's you. Your okay. Fault. Okay. Send the hate mail to him. <laughs> Send the hate mail to him. <laughs> so, um, because you, you helped me revitalize and you know kind of create this brand new this brand new thing after that whole thing cratered. So huge thank you to you. So I'm always going to support you in anything you're doing. 
So Thank just you. so you know. So um, plus what you do is is fantastic because it's not really it's not really a thing that people see. I mean, people see martial arts class and self-defense classes, but what you do with being aware of your surroundings with that aspect is just not a thing that's done. And well, I, I know business is booming for you, but probably so because of everything that's been going on. Well, you've seen the news. You have seen the news in the past year. It's been kind of wild and rough out there. So what you do Ooh. really, <laughs> really is to listen in because it's going to play a dividend. And it, it, actually, I'm not going to say my, it will save your life. I'm going to tell you right now, it will at some point save your life. Uh, with what this guy's going to put out for everybody today. So, um, yeah, no pressure. Clint. Yeah, no pressure. Yeah, no me. pressure, though. <laughs> Don't mess up. <laughs> so, everybody's life is on. Not only is he responsible oh. for this, he's responsible for your life now, too. No pressure. It's, I'm leaving. <laughs> so, uh, but, so let's, let's dive into like the. You know, the past four years, I mean, this has been your lifespan, your career. This mm -hmm. has been, you know, your, essentially your reason for being, yes. right? Yeah. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about where you started in the physical side and okay. then have you merged into what you're doing and then we'll get into what we were talking about before. So, I mean, it's, this is going to, seriously, I'm, I'm so pumped about this show. <laughs> I was that kid that, as a kid, was greatly inspired by the series Kung Fu. I loved that show. Consequently, I wanted to learn martial arts, but I grew up in a small fishing town of 1,200 people in North Florida, where there just weren't any schools. Near school is Tallahassee, 60 miles away. So when I first went to college, I was enrolled in an off-campus Taekwondo program, but I was taking Judo on campus, which those two styles and systems did not merge well. This is long before the days of mixed martial arts, and they did not mix well together. Oh, yeah. I bet if one of them knew that you were doing the other one, they would be like, you had well, choose your class. Well, I was getting kicked class. out of tournaments and constantly yeah. chided because I was trying to throw somebody in a Taekwondo tournament or kick somebody in a Judo tournament. It didn't work well. Yeah. <laughs> But I was ahead of my time. Who knew? When I went, uh, transferred to a private school, went to Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, when I transferred from Florida State, I started um, taking karate up there. And then when I graduated, and I got in black belts in a lot of these different systems, but when I was graduating, I ran to a guy that, and this is the 80s, where the ninja craze was really big. Oh, yeah. And there was a fellow named Robert Bussey who actually went to Japan and lived with the living grandmaster of ninjutsu, Masaki Hatsumi, for a number of years. And he was one of the first Americans to bring ninjutsu to the United States. And that was in the late 70s, early 80s, before the movie craze. But then the movie craze hit with all the ninja. I, and he became very popular. No, and no, I was fascinated yeah. by it because even back then, I was really more interested in martial arts as a self, means of self-defense more than a sport or an art. Mm -hmm. And so I was constantly trying to find that style or system out there that would be more in line with that focus. So I studied under he and his brother. I got an instructor license there. I taught for six years as the self-defense instructor at Royal Roberts University for a number of years at the Cooper Clinic up there. And then I ran into the gentleman that you and I knew, and they were the founders at that time of a program called KFM, or KC Fighting Method, which now is the defense lab that's spelled mm -hmm. D-E-F-E-N-C-E -E -E because it's based in the UK, hence the different spelling for defense, the defense lab. And these are the gentlemen that trained Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, trained Daniel Craig for the Bond films, trained uh, Christian, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Christian Bale for the Batman films, just numerous, numerous yeah. movies. Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson for Taken. They're still good buddies, those guys are. And then also have some other friends. I was mentioning you, one of them was just recently in The Mandalorian and one of the fight sequences with the Sokos Tano. And you see my friend Diana Lee and Asanto on there, whose father or godfather was Bruce Lee. Her mm -hmm. dad and Bruce Lee were both best friends. So I've been around these communities and these kind of people for decades. And again, the whole emphasis was more the system of defense than the actual art or sport yeah. aspect to it. So that was all that background. Now parlay that into what I've been doing since I graduated from college, which is really at that time I was the national spokesman right out of college through a series of events, became the national spokesman for a program called the Child Lures Crime Prevention Program. My boss, my mentor, his name was Ken Wooden. He was an investigative reporter and producer for 2020, 60 Minutes, NBC News. This is a man who interviewed Bundy, Lucas, Gacy, many mm -hmm. of the names we know in crime history. And he interviewed them to determine not why they did what they did, but how they did what they did. And how they did how it so How did well. you gain their trust? How did you lure your victims? All these things. 
So I began working with him and I taught his program to 250,000 K-12 students in schools, another 40,000-50,000 adult professionals. So by the time I was 25, I'd already been in front of 300,000 people live. Now extrapolate that 30 years later and you can kind of get an idea of how many people I've been in front of from live audiences. But whereas child lures really obviously focused on children, mm -hmm. I saw an incredible market for teaching adults because one of the things we did in the late 80s for Oprah, 2020, Good Morning America, and others, as well as news stations across the country, we lured grown adults into cars and vans to show how easy it was to lure a grown adult and get into a car with a total stranger. And you found it was like stupid easy. We were batting a hundred. Yeah, you literally, literally batting a hundred. Yeah. Even at places like Princeton University and other schools that we went to, college students, professionals, sealed suite executives, they were all getting into cars and vans. And we were, we were amazed at this. And we did at the time to say, if I can lure you as an adult, of course I can lure your child. Hence why we're talking about this program, Child Lures. But the thing kept going on in my mind is, okay, if we're teaching the kids, Who's teaching the adults? Because they are falling for this stuff. Yep. So I saw the market for the adult world and began to pursue that. And that's what I've done since early 2000 with my own company, Defense by Design. So understanding the physicality of what contributes to conflicts, combat type situations, but also pairing it with that more enhanced level of awareness has put me, I think, in a rather unique position. And certainly the companies that hire me around the country have seemingly ascribed to that as well. Oh, but yeah. that's, as best I can, the Reader's Digest version of merging these two worlds. Yeah, and I, I, I love that about them because, so my, my background in martial arts, mine started off, my dad's a police officer, okay? Mm -hmm. Most everybody knows that, legendary. And he had a lot of enemies, okay? Uh, to the point, there was like a, a price on both of our heads at one point uh, because of the thing he wow. was doing. So I had to go into martial arts specifically for defense, protection, awareness. If somebody tries to abduct you, this is what you do. I mean, it was a like no holds barred. I mean, it was Taekwondo. We, we did like the f nice, cool, pretty, do the cause. That's the first half of the class. Second half of the class is like, okay, two people are have, have you on the ground. What are you gonna do? And literally, I mean, you're there. And I was like 10, 11 years old going through this mm -hmm. um, at that point in my life. So I've always looked at martial arts more from that standpoint than, you know, yeah, we go to the tournament and you know you do the kick, kick and get a point, all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Fun, uh, crane technique. No, no, no. <laughs> You're on the ground. What do you do, right? Uh, which is not something you do in, in Taekwondo at all. No, you don't want to go on the ground ever. No. no. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I, that's one reason I wanted to bring you on. We've got a quick. So let's do a little tidbit of what's what's going to come up in this next, next segment about mm -hmm. fight versus attack. Yeah, because I think the biggest misconception that people have and where some of the bravado and machismo comes into play is that we think, first of all, that this, whenever we get into a physical situation, it's gonna be a fight. And it's really gonna be more of an attack. We'll talk about that in a second. And then a lot of people put a little bit too much um, confidence in that thing they carry on their hip. Mm -hmm. When the law says you can only use those in certain situations. Unless you find yourself in a courtroom or the newsroom because you put somebody else in the emergency room, you yep. need to understand that force continuum and spectrum. But when it comes to a fight versus attack, and thing we'll kind of elaborate a little yeah. bit more, the biggest difference is, is in a fight versus an attack, in a fight, you typically see it coming. A fight kind of has its own life where two people square off against each other and the crowd goes because temperatures are rising, the verbal exchange is there, it builds. Yeah. With an attack, it happens. Secondly, when a fight, typically speaking, more often than not, it's one and one. An attack, that's not necessarily yeah. so. In fact, more street situations are more than one attack. Yeah. And you know what nobody sees coming right now? A commercial break. break. <laughs> so take a look at the sponsors, my sponsors Come specifically. Uh, I have a hookup and <laughs> it's hilarious. He's going, okay. Um, and on Edge Health Cooking and the rest of the sponsors we have the show come back so you can hear more about because this is is the real thing that you want to hear with this segment. You're watching The Health Engineer. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Introducing IV Hookup. IV treatments have been the standard of care used for years to deliver intravenous hydration treatment to patients. Our medical director has created a safe, industry standard protocol to efficiently support your wellness through IV vitamin hydration, including options for athletic performance, mood enhancement, general wellness, and hangover recovery. IV Hookup now offers full-spectrum COVID-19 testing at reasonable prices. This means we can get you and your staff tested in a quick time frame. 
Are you hosting a group event? We can provide a customized package for IV treatment and COVID testing as well. IV Hookup is everything you need to both stay healthy and to prove it. Go to ivyhookup.com to order yours and we'll bring it right to you. That's ivyhookup.com. Uh, our position in the market is that we work for a customer to align them with the correct retailer for their business. We'll custom price and, and build a contract around your business requirements, not around the supplier's preferred way of doing things. Uh, we go and do a custom price based on your energy usage profile. And in our business, we can, we can help any commercial business owner regardless of the size of their company. If you're paying $100 for your electricity per month or you're paying a million dollars, we're able to help you get a better price based on who you are. Uh, our position in the market is that we work for a customer to align them with the correct retailer for their business. Texas is very proud to have been shut, able to shut down nine coal-fired power plants in the last two years and replace that production with clean burning uh, renewable energy. The 85% of the electricity in the grid for Texas is used on commercial. Uh, we're here to help those 85% reduce their costs as much as possible. And we're back. Why? That's right. <laughs> Is, we're going to be doing some Kung Fu fighting for everybody in there. Not really. But uh, so we left off with what you don't see coming versus what you do see coming, which is the fight versus the attack. Um, so let's dive into that. And then we're going to talk about, well, the health aspect, which is, mm -hmm. are you actually healthy enough to engage in this thing or even survive? Uh, or, or if you've got somebody there with you, are you healthy enough to like pull them out of the situation, maybe save their life, right? Yeah. Um, which is why you train and really training for life and training to live and for you know whatever is going to happen because you don't know. You may be picking the groceries out of the car and then you got somebody picking you up, and not for a date. <laughs> no. At least not the kind of date you oh, want. You're out shopping yeah. for others. Somebody else yeah. may be shopping yeah. for you. So. Yeah. Uh, let's 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 hop back into the yep. whole fight versus attack. So scenario. yeah, again, real quick. Obviously, in the last time we talked about number one, you see a fight come and attack. You often don't. Number two is the fact that typically speaking, there's only one person's one on one scenario in an attack. Rarely is that going to be yeah. the case. In fact, there's more of a pack yeah. mentality. Which we've seen a lot of that this year. But more and more street violence. Yeah. Cops will tell a you have seen is, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Third is in a fight, rarely will you see weapons come into play. Because you got two people, oh, we're squaring off, we're going to yeah. man to man. In an attack, yes. Not only can weapons be introduced, they can be improvised. Yeah. Uh, skateboards, for instance, have been a, a big weapon of use this year. Well, there again, if I, if yeah. I feel like I'm being threatened, I'll take up an ink pen. I'll take a pencil. I'll take anything. I'll take that well, I mean, rock. From, I'm, I mean, from the yeah. attacker, from the attacker side. Oh, yeah. You know, Absolutely. You're walking and you know, a skateboard jumps flying across. Doosh. Right. Somebody's drunk, they can break a bottle and yeah. all of a sudden improvised weapon. So there's that kind of dynamic that comes into play. And also, and then finally, in a fight, most cases, you're talking about people going to spend a night or two in jail or maybe more later or an emergency room. In an attack scenario, we're talking about someone could go to the morgue. So there's definitely some different dynamics at play in an attack versus a fight. Uh, along with, so we were talking a little bit about uh, fight, flight, and freeze response. Yeah. Because nobody knows what their response is going to be until it happens, especially a friend of yours that you talked about. was yeah. they, She'd been doing martial arts for how long? It's, well, she'd gotten her black belt in black one belt. particular system. Yeah. And it was it, she was actually attending a seminar with her parents. She was post-college. And she came up and she said, you know, I trained for years. And I was at a mall. I was coming down the escalator. And this guy comes up and he just grabs me by the arm. And she said, after all my years of quote-unquote training, I just froze. I, I, my mouth kind of went agape. I couldn't move. And yeah. finally he realized, he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were my daughter. Yeah. L like, and, lucky for him, lucky for him, she froze. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and even she said, even after he walked away, I was still frozen. Yeah. So there again, you people talk about fight, flight, but you also have that third F, freeze, that yep. very much can come yep. into play. And you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Which which is like, if, if you've, anybody out there, you've seen the videos of the, uh, the fainting goats. Yeah. Uh, you know, are, are you going to fly away? Or are you going to fight like a lion? Or are you going to be a fainting goat and just don't? Because <laughs> it, happen, it, it happens. Yeah, it does. 
So those are the situations we're talking about as far as a fight versus an attack. To your point, you were alluding to a while ago as far as the physicalities that come into play, certainly the advantage of being in better shape. And I'm not talking about Mr. America or anything like that. Yeah. I'm just saying that to be, and Miss America too, you don't have to be Gina Carano, you know, from The Mandalorian. You don't have to be yeah. but it um, helps. Ronda Rousey. <laughs> oh, that would do well. First of all, nobody's <laughs> probably going to be approaching you. <laughs> but, it helps. but on the male or female side, you don't have to be a bodybuilder. You yeah. don't have to be someone who's in peak physical condition. You don't have to be Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, you just have to have functional fitness. Yeah. In other words, first of all, can you run? Can you potentially escape the situation altogether? Secondly, then can you at least, do you have enough mass? Do you have enough muscle? Do you have enough things to protect you if you're being hit from multiple sides at the same time? There's a lot of things that factor in there. Do you have the strength to potentially deal with another person? And this could be male to female, female to female. I mean, so many dynamics come in oh, yeah. gender wise. And then finally, do you have the ability to extract someone else from a situation? I was on a lot of uh, radio station interviews the day after the Las Vegas shooting. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I brought up on several of those, they said, well, what's our takeaway? I said, well, first of all, no one could have seen that coming that was in that crowd. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to play a Monday morning quarterback. Yeah. But the one thing I want people to pay attention to that were in those videos is how many people were just flat off their face, drunk, three or two or three sheets to the wind. And other people were putting themselves in harm's way and at risk to go in and extract their friends who did not have the ability because they were drunk to extract themselves. Yeah. So those things come to play. When you go out to a party, when you go out drinking, if you're right. at the point where you are compromised to the point you cannot defend yourself or extract yourself, you are a liability. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're showing with me a great story about two of your buddies. Yeah. Big, okay, yeah. big dudes. We're talking like two Dwayne Johnsons walking around. MMA trained as well. MMA trained, you know, fully trained, everything else. You know, they went out, they, they were drinking. Mm-hmm. They got attacked, and first yeah. thing they did is they called you and, Dude, hey, Jeff, we messed up, man. <laughs> yeah, one well, sent me the picture from his hospital bed with his face lacerated because these two guys, bodybuilders, MMA trained, two to three sheets of the wind, walking home to the apartment yeah. a couple blocks away, four guys attacked the two of them who were physically and mentally compromised due to alcohol, rolled them for the money, and Anthony ended up with a slash lacerated face by the broken beer ball. Yeah. One of them improvised in the attack. So there again, all of these dynamics come, in, come into play. And so a lot of that awareness has to do with self-awareness, yeah. where it starts first. Take physical and mental inventory of yourself. Do I have the ability to do these things for myself? Do I have the ability to do these things potentially for someone else who is compromised? Yeah, and 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 having your making sure that your internal security system is up and working, which you know we talked about this, kind of making some jokes about you know are, are your video cameras working properly? Yeah, these you are, know, are your are, video are, are cameras. Your audio, are your audio monitors working properly? Your alarm it, it, is your it, instinct. It, it, is your siren working properly? Yeah, your right? access control yeah. is the bubble around you. Yeah, people that, come in that personal yeah, bubble. That so that's six that comes foot, into play. Six feet 20, of space. Twenty-one feet, according to most cops. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. even bigger, yeah, because you've got advanced. You've got to have time else. to react. Yeah. So all of this comes into play, and this is why I think what you're doing and what you talk about is absolutely on the money as far as when people are thinking about their physical safety. It's not just physical fitness. Your phys level of fitness also parlays into your physical safety. Yep. It's not a guarantee because they're, again, just like those two guys, you can do things to compromise yourself. And that's something, again, self-awareness, yep. being a base, that you need to make sure you take mental inventory of. But certainly, the better you are as far as functional fitness, mm -hmm. the more aware, self-aware, and situational aware I think you will be in these type of given situations. Yeah, yeah. so it comes down to, okay, maybe, maybe you can run a marathon. That's great. But can you care, how far can you carry somebody? Um, can you carry something else? What happens if you got three, you know, one or two people pushing on you? Can you, if you're on a marathon, you're not going to be prepared for that. Uh, also, if all you do is like a one rep max and you're power lifter, are you going to be able to run a hundred feet? Probably not. Definitely can't run a mile, right? So it's that, that piece of, if you're going to the gym and you're training, yes, you want to get in shape. You want to look better, all that stuff, but you need to be aware of your training for life and you know preservation of life mm -hmm. with, within that aspect. And realize, bad things happen to good people too. You, oh, yeah. You're physically trained, but you go ski yeah. in an aspen, yeah. break a leg, yeah. and for three months you're hobbling around crutches. You have to think about your safety now during that recovery period yeah. differently than you normally would have. 
because normally you could have run away. Normally you can maybe fight off, but when you're dealing with crutches and a broken leg, yeah. different well, scenario. So more, more often than not, it, bad things happen to good people because you know, good people generally see the good in everybody else. Mm -hmm. Well, this person's just coming up, they, they just need some help. And you, yeah. I mean, you teach, you I tell forever, yeah. that's like yeah. the number one ploy. Oh, help me. Yeah. Who is this person? There's a difference between a good person and a good story. Yeah. And learning how to discern those two is the difference between potentially being a victim versus someone who is being a good Samaritan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love your tagline about it's, there's no safe or un there's, there's no, no such thing as safe, safe or unsafe, unsafe places, places, only safe or unsafe people. people. And that's it. Yeah. So I'm just, it all comes into play and it's a holistic approach. Yeah. So with that, everybody, hopefully, hopefully y'all took some notes. Um, Kung Fu fighting. <laughs> so uh, but ha how does everybody get a hold of you and, and who, are you looking for, who are you looking to work with? Because I know you work with like some large organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I work, a, I speak a lot of conference conventions around the country. Most of my clients, client clients, number one are insurance companies. Number two are financial companies that hire me for client events or to train their clients in these risk management type strategies, and which then fosters on-site employee training, which is more about the on-the-clock and off-the-clock safety. Because if yeah. something happens to you off-the-clock, you're not showing up on-the-clock either. So that's also a holistic approach. But people can find me at defensebydesign.com. Simple as that, defensebydesign.com. Okay. Yeah, he's also the best-looking guy in a hat you'll ever meet. I don't know about that. I've seen some pretty good hat wearers. Yeah, this is true. But I'll so, take your copy. Okay, maybe, maybe second. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have pictures later to prove. Wes might actually take the, take, the, take the cake on that one with, with his, uh, with, when do we do the picture? Because y'all are both going to have hats and I'm not. So anyway, thank you for joining us right here at the Health Engineer Show on the Offbeat Business Media Network, OBBM TV. Check us out, Roku, everywhere else that you can get stuff streamed. Uh, check out the rest of the shows as well. And of course, my sponsors, Ivy Hookup. Uh, Don't Natural Healthy Cookie Company and everybody else is sponsoring this network. Thank you. See you next time. You're watching The Health Engineer. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Strong business has always been the clear economic indicator. Work Suites in Allen, Texas is just one of 18 locations in DFW and Houston that support your necessary transitions with full service and affordable workspaces for upgrading or downsizing your current workload. You need to be focused on growth. Trust the office experts and helpful staff at WorkSuites to take care of everything else, from dedicated phone lines and internet to furnished executive and co-working spaces. The OBBM network has tripled our business on the short months we've been with WorkSuites and encourages you to step out boldly, make the tough decisions, and give back to work your way. Your nation depends on it. The OBBM network acknowledges that this is a pivotal time in history, and it is clear the United States of America has been undermined by many of our elected officials for some time now. We want our local business audience to stand strong in the face of what we now understand and to be empowered to grow our businesses on the local level beyond the limitations that have been imposed upon us. We believe it is in our national interest to inspire our communities through strong economic development and, additionally, to hold our elected officials accountable for accurate representation of We the People. For that reason, we encourage you to go to WeStandForFreedom.com to learn about the National Write Your Congressman organization that has been the trusted communication tool for local communities for over 60 years. Learn how your representatives are voting. Understand the laws and regulations under consideration on the state and federal level before they are enacted at the county and city levels. Communicate directly with these officials and stand up for yourself, for by doing so, you will protect the communities you serve from tyrannical rule and unconstitutional reforms. The OBBM Network is the premier voice for local business, and we take that responsibility seriously. The OBBM Network has everything you need to grow and transition your business for success on popular syndicated podcast networks, Roku and other video channels, and the OBBM Network app. We work for you, local business, and we've got your back. You know what you didn't expect? Coming back for the bonus session. That's right. So, <laughs> bonus round! Bonus round! All right. We're going to overtime. So, because uh, we left off, there's a lot. There's so much left. Yeah. For oh, us. We, we could do like five shows on this. We could do a whole brand new show. 
Um, <laughs> so, no, no. <laughs> so, but you you do some very specific presentations. Yeah, I do. That I think everybody needs to learn a little bit more about. Yeah, uh, because I mean, we covered a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so let, let's. I know you got like your two questions. Yeah. There, and this is just something for anybody watching yeah. that say, okay, well, kind of when you go out and teach, what are the things you teach? I did a TED talk a few years ago, and if you go to two, spell out the word T W O key K E Y questions. You know, I spell that dot now n o w dot site s i t e is a landing page. Yeah. Go to two key questions dot now dot site. You can fill a little form there. Yeah, I'm gonna capture your info, but I'm not gonna inundate you with a bunch of emails. It's just so you can get a video link to this TED talk where for about ten minutes I talk about two key questions you can ask yourself if someone ever approaches you and wonder is this a good person or is it a good story. What are two key questions that can help you discern within seconds the potential for this going south very quickly. So that's just something anybody can watch and learn from and share with others. Okay. Uh, some of the other things I'm doing right now, obviously, I've got one seminar called Predicting Violent Behavior, which again, talks about how do you spot trouble before trouble spots you, which is my tagline. Another one, I did this seminar a year ago, and now, good Lord, are people learning from it, called Caught on Camera. What happens when your employees get caught in compromising situations that can lead your company into a bad PR scenario? That's a Canon camera nobody wants. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to win any awards for that one. No prize money. Oh, maybe, maybe, some, maybe some lawsuits. Yeah. So those you can reach me about as far as defensebydesign.com. The information's there. But I really encourage people, watch the two key questions because that's something anyone can learn and also you can teach your kids. Okay. And with that little bonus round, we're out. Have a good day. Enjoy the show. Come back for the next episode. The Health Engineer is produced by Offbeat Business Media for the OBBM Network and made possible through the generous support of sponsors and viewers like you. For program information, call 214-714-0495. The Health Engineer, Offbeat Business Media LLC, OBBM, Network Trademarks, and all portions of this broadcast are produced for the exclusive use of the OBBM Network and affiliates and may not be reproduced without written permission by Offbeat Business Media, LLC. All inquiries are directed to call 214-714-0495.